Hey guys, happy Tuesday. It's not Monday, so that is a reason to celebrate. Today I'm going to be sharing some speed reviews. I'm going to be giving you some updated thoughts on products that I've been testing out recently. Many of these are new to me. One of them is a product that I have really changed my mind about since the first time I tried it and I wanted to share kind of my updated thoughts on it now because wow it came in from out of nowhere and it is now a total favorite very unexpectedly so let's go ahead and get into some of these reviews I'm gonna start with a couple of products that were in my recent video where I tried out products that you recommended to me products that you thought I would like based on just like what you know about me the first one I'll start out with is the ColourPop pretty fresh foundation this has become such a favorite in a matter of just a couple of weeks. I love this foundation. I have very problematic skin. I have acne prone skin. I have lately somewhat of an oily t-zone. I have dry patches. I have peeling from tretinoin on occasion. So I need a foundation that can handle all of those challenges. I feel like this is a foundation that so many people would love. I feel like I can say that because I have a lot of different skin types kind of wrapped into one and it works for me. So I feel like that means it's going to work for a lot of people. Now they call it a hydrating foundation which might lead you to think it's going to be dewy but it's actually not. It has more of just a natural satin, almost soft matte finish which is normally not my preference. I used to be all dew all day, but now I am kind of coming around to more matte finishes, which is weird. We're gonna talk about that a little bit more in this video too, but I oddly really like the finish of this. It holds up really well on my skin, even though oftentimes foundations will break down kind of in this region of my face. This has probably the best staying power of any foundation that I currently own. It also has this beautiful like smoothing effect on my pore areas. I think this would be beautiful for photography, for if you just need something long wearing. The coverage level is also really nice. I would say it's medium buildable. This is what I have on today. I didn't use any spot concealers and I think it just, my skin just looks great. I'm very happy with the way my skin looks today. So. This has very quickly become a favorite. I think this is going to be a year-round favorite for me because I could also see this being really nice in the warm summer months too. So that is a win. Total win. Loving that so much. And while we're talking about base products, I wanted to talk about the product that I completely changed my mind about. And I never didn't like this, but it, it was just that I didn't really think it was right for me necessarily. But I now love it. This is the Unsun Mineral Tinted Face Sunscreen Lotion with SPF 30. So this was included in my 2021 Mineral Sunscreen Roundup video. <clears throat> my voice just cracked. And this did rank in my top five, which was pretty good, but what I said about it was that I just didn't think it was really my preference because it was so mattifying, and I just at the time wasn't really into mattifying sunscreens. And that is true for most mattifying sunscreens, but I recently started using this more because I ran out of some other mineral sunscreens and this was kind of just the next one in line to use up. And I love it. I didn't think I was going to enjoy it so much, but even having dry skin and dry patches and this being mattifying, it kind of smooths over those areas of my skin. It doesn't accentuate dry patches at all. In a weird way, it's hydrating while being mattifying. And it also wears beautifully under makeup. It just kind of creates this very smooth blurred canvas. It kind of just acts like a blurring makeup primer. And I just can't believe how much I love this. I like pairing this with dewy foundations like the Ilias Skin Tint or the Urban Decay Hydromaniac. But I also like pairing it with the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Foundation, which is the combo I have on today. The tint of this is a little bit too deep for my skin, but it blends into my skin just fine. And once I put makeup on over it, that kind of covers it up anyway. But I think this would make a great tinted sunscreen, especially for anybody who normally has a hard time finding tinted sunscreens that aren't too light. I think this will work great for a lot of like medium to even deeper skin tones. And fun fact, this brand, Unsun, was founded by Frank Ocean's mother, of all people, which just makes me love it even more. So go figure. They've got some other sunscreens in their line that I'm now curious to try, but this is also a great, pretty affordable one. I think it's like $15 or $16, and I recently saw it on sale for like $9 on Nordstrom. Now I hope that doesn't mean it's being discontinued. I really hope that's not what that means, but yeah, this is great. Totally changed my mind about it. Another product that was recommended to me by you guys is the Sigma Enchanted Palette. Now, I have been testing this a lot. I'm actually working on a one week one palette with this that is hopefully going up on Thursday of this week, if not early next week. And I have 
some mixed feelings on this palette. This is what I'm wearing today. This look will be included in my one week one palette video. So at first, I thought that my problem with this palette was the shimmers because some of them were just acting kind of weird to me. Like this green shade the first time I used it, it went on my lids not even looking green. It kind of just looked like a taupey color. And then some of these other shimmers were just very lackluster, like the shade Metamorphosis. Now, what a lot of you guys were telling me is that the shimmers need to be worn over a glitter glue, which is exactly what I've been doing ever since that video testing this out for the first time. That certainly helps, and I don't mind taking that extra step. I have other palettes that also kind of require a glitter primer, like the Aether Beauty Rose Quartz palette, and that's one of my favorite palettes. Even though I pretty much have to use some of those shimmers with a glitter primer, I still love it. So that has really helped these shimmers shine to their fullest potential, and I have even noticed something really nice about these shimmers that in regular light, like right here, they kind of just look like any other shimmer. But when I am like standing in direct sunlight and I turn my head to the side, the shimmers are just so glimmery and just like they've got this beautiful scattered glimmer to them that is really unique and I think that kind of sets these apart from other shimmers. So I've really come around on the shimmers in here. But my real complaint with this palette is the mattes. These deeper mattes especially like Claystone, Evergreen, Terra. They go on kind of patchy sometimes, and I find them very difficult to blend, and they also have a tendency to blend away, so you just have to really kind of give them special treatment to make them look good. Like today I have Claystone in my outer corner, and I was able to fix it, but a lot of times I'll place it in my outer corner where I want it, and then, like I normally do after I've done that step, is I like to blend that out with a fluffy brush and a lot of times what ends up happening is it picks up some of that shade and I am wearing like my Urban Decay primer potion which is always the eyeshadow primer that works for me so I think it's really just an issue with the formulation of these they just they like to blend away they can kind of start to look a little bit patchy which I just find really annoying for a $49 palette then I have to kind of go over it to get rid of the patchiness and like try not to over blend just like barely blend the edges. So that's my biggest complaint about this palette. One other small complaint I have is that these two shades, Loam and Claystone, are so similar. Claystone is just a little bit deeper. I feel like they could have left one out and replaced it with something else. I was also whining at first about the fact that there weren't a lot of like medium toned transition colors in here, but I'm not as bothered by that now because I realized that any of these deeper shades, like today I used Terra and just mixed that with a little bit of quartz to lighten it and that made it into a nice like mid-toned transition color for me. So that doesn't bother me. The only real like straight up transition color for me on its own is Innocent, but I've figured out how to solve that problem for myself. So anyway, overall I'm kind of wishing I hadn't paid full price for this palette. Actually, I didn't pay full full price. I did use like a 10% off affiliate code to get it. So I, I didn't pay like the full $49, but I still paid, you know, close to that. And I feel like I would pay like maybe half off for this. I feel like that would be a fair price, but I just feel like $49 is pretty steep. It's nice that you get a dual-ended Sigma brush, which has been useful, but I feel like I'm, I'm mainly paying for the shadows, you know? But I'm still going to enjoy it. I've gotten some looks out of it that I've really loved. I've also gotten some looks out of it that I have not loved at all. Um, but now that I've kind of learned how to use it, I'm starting to like it more and more. Okay, another thing I've been testing out over the last couple of weeks are these new BK Beauty lipsticks. They did send these over along with their lip liners, and I love the BK Beauty brushes, so I was really excited to try these out, um, because I haven't tried any of their makeup products yet. And I'm really enjoying these. So there are five lipsticks and they're all kind of nude colors, but they do range in undertone and depth. Today I'm wearing a combination of the lip liner in the shade Warm Spice, which actually happens to make a great alternative to the Jordana lip liner in Rock and Rose that I've loved for so long. This is just kind of a nice, it's really not too warm. Normally I wouldn't like something called Warm Spice, but it's kind of like a rosy beige that's not too warm. Sometimes like Milani Spice, that lip liner, 
pulled too orangey on me. This one is not quite that way. So that's what I love about this. So that's what I have on as my lip liner today. And then over that I have on the lipstick in the shade Kindness, which I think I've decided is my favorite of the group. It's kind of similar to the Urban Decay Vice lipstick in Liar, but it's a little bit lighter. But it's one of those nudes that I would describe as like 75% peach, 25% pink, and there's not too much brown in here. So I love that. This is my favorite kind of nude to wear lately. So that combo is so beautiful. These liners are great. They have kind of an angled tip to them, which I don't think I've ever had a lip liner like that before, but I find that that angled shape kind of, it almost hugs my lips a little bit and I just get a very nice smooth application every time. I feel like it's the perfect happy medium for a lip liner in terms of gliding on the lips well, but not being too creamy that it's gonna slide around. And then the lipsticks are also beautiful. They're very comfortable, hydrating, creamy. They're not too thick. They feel almost just like I'm wearing a lip balm. They're not gonna have crazy long staying power just because they are just a creamy hydrating lipstick, but they are in these beautiful like blush colored metal tubes. They have a magnetic closure. So they just feel very, very luxe. The lipsticks are $22 and the liners are $12, which I think is a fair price, especially with how luxe these feel. Because they're all nude shades, I would say you probably don't need to buy all five of them unless you just really wanna try them all, um, in which case get the bundle because it is a slightly better deal. But I would say for most people, if you're really wanting to try this formula, maybe just pick the one that seems like your you know, most flattering nude color. I do have a discount code with BK Beauty. It's not an affiliate code, so I don't get like a kickback from it, but it just saves you some money. I'll just put it on the screen here, but it gets you, I think, 10% off. Oh, another product from my video, trying products that you recommended to me. This is also a winner. This is the NYX Epic Wear Eyeliner Stick, so it's just an eyeliner pencil, and I ended up getting the shade Rose Gold. It ended up being a lot lighter than I expected. Um, I don't know what I was expecting, but it's a light kind of rose gold shade. And I am loving this, especially in the waterline. This is the kind of eyeliner shade that I'm really only gonna use in the waterline because it's, it's just a little bit too light to actually give me like definition as a true eyeliner. But for a waterline eyeliner, this has great staying power. Up until now, I had not really ever found a waterline eyeliner that impressed me at all. This actually sticks around in the waterline really well. I, I mean, I would say by the end of a, a long day's wear, I still have about 50% of it left in my waterline, which is a lot more than most. Now, this is the only shade I've tried so far. I am really curious to try more shades though. They've got a ton of shades in this line, including some really fun looking colors. So I'm tempted to pick more up um, just to test out some more shades and see if they also last as well in the waterline. But I feel like this, I would even recommend this over like the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide-On eye pencils. Those are really nice too, but I feel like this has even better staying power and an equally good like range of colors. So really great drugstore find here. Okay, next we have kind of a random one, but this really blew me away. <sighs> Got a hair. I noticed such fast results with this. This is from Advanced Clinicals. I've been trying out a few of their products and so far I'm really liking them. So far this is the only one that I've like tested enough to have like a fully developed opinion on and I love it. This is the Body Bump Eraser. So they say this is a weightless leave-on serum for rough, dry, bumpy skin. It has lactic and glycolic acids to gently exfoliate built up layers of dead skin. So I have, as long as I can remember, had KP on the backs of my arms and I always just kind of figured there was nothing I could do about it. It was only in the past couple of years that I've heard people talking about like products for KP and I was like, oh, I guess I that is what I have then, huh? But I hadn't really tried anything for it until this. This, after about two applications, my backs of my arms were already feeling so much smoother. And now, I mean, the KP is pretty much gone. I think I have like one little bump right here, but it is nothing compared to what it was even just like two weeks ago since I used this. And I would say I use this maybe every other day. I'm not even that consistent with it, honestly. I'll actually go ahead and apply some now. And it's this huge tube, which is probably gonna last forever because I only use about that much every time. And it's a nice kind of like gel cream, completely unscented, I'm pretty sure. And it sinks right in. And I mean, it works, like my KP is gone. And this brand is cruelty free. I don't think they're on Logical Harmony or Leaping Bunny, but on their website, in their FAQ page, they actually have a pretty like thorough explanation of their cruelty-free status, which is really rare for brands to have on their website, so I really appreciated that. So I was satisfied with all of their answers on there, and they are also PETA certified, if that helps. So 
This would probably make, I haven't tried like the amlactin, which I think is what a lot of dermatologists recommend for KP, but this I'm guessing would make a really good cruelty-free dupe to that product. All right, so I have a couple of hair care products now. These were both actually sent via Octoly, but Eva NYC came out with a Main Magic hair fragrance. So this is scented exactly like all of their Main Magic products, their like therapy session hair mask, all those things. And I do really enjoy this scent. I have to say, now that I have the like actual hair fragrance version, I feel like I might start to get tired of the scent. Like I don't know if I love the scent that much that I need like a hair perfume of it, but it does work really well. If you love this scent and you just want your hair to smell like this all the time, this, I just put like one spritz on either side. In fact, I'll go ahead and do it now. But if maybe you just wanna like freshen up your hair and make it smell good, the scent, it is strong, like you don't need a ton of spritzes of it, and it really does make your hair smell like that. So um, the bottle is super cute too. It kind of looks like a little light bulb, which is just adorable. So I do recommend this if you really, really, really love the scent. Even as somebody who really does like the scent a lot in, in other products, I don't know if I feel like I need to have it in perfume form for my hair. But there are other hair scents, like the Amika scent. I would totally use that in a hair fragrance, but this one, I just, I don't know if I love it that much, you know? Speaking of Amika, I also have been trying out their Top Gloss Shine Spray, and this is interesting. I'd never tried anything like this before. I kind of just use it as like the last step in my styling routine. Just after I've styled it, I'll just spray a little bit of this on. Um, I don't have any on today. I didn't actually style my hair today. I kind of just decided to let my hair itself <laughs> for better or worse I just I don't know but what the heck I'll go ahead and spray some of this on too the thing about this <coughs> whoa oh I just inhaled it so much having like very fine hair that is prone to looking stringy I have to be very very conservative with how much of this I use because even just now with that small spritz I feel like my hair is looking a little bit stringy it's almost almost like a dry oil spray in a way. It also has UV filters in it apparently, and it's just supposed to give your hair a glossy, glowy finish. So I do think this is a nice product, but I probably need to hold it like much farther away from my hair, and I just have to use it very, very sparingly. But I do think this is a cool product, and I do notice that it does add some nice shine to my hair. So that's my thoughts on that. I don't think it's like a must have for me. I feel like if you have like dark hair, like dark brown hair, or black hair, this would be even more useful because that's the kind of hair that like really shows that glossy finish even more. Whereas like, you know, dirty blonde hair like I have, I feel like that type of glossy shine isn't as noticeable, but cool product. Thought I would go ahead and share my thoughts on it. But those are my speed reviews this time around. I hope you guys enjoyed hearing some updated thoughts on these products. Stay tuned for my Sigma Enchanted One Week One Palette because that is coming very soon. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will talk to you again very soon in my next video. Bye.